So let's look at some other situations that may occur uh, when doing problems like this. Notice on this problem here, we have an issue because there's x's on the left side and x's on the right side, uh, which seems a little odd uh, for the problems that we've done so far. But it's not an issue as long as we can get those x's together. And what we can do is use the law of opposition to subtract those x's over to the other side. So for example, here I have plus 2x. I could go ahead and minus 2x to both sides. In doing that, the x's will be gone from the right hand side. 2x minus 2x, well that's 0. And so we're just left with minus 7. And here we have 3x minus 2x, which is just x. And we still have the plus 5. Now we can finish using the law of oppositions by subtracting both sides by 5 and we get x equals negative 12. Here's one that's a little crazier. We'll have to work on getting all the x's to one side. I'm going to go ahead and combine the like terms first. So here we get 4x minus 2x. That leaves us with 2x. And here we have 5 plus 3. Well, that's 8. Over here we have 9x plus an x. That's 10x. And negative 8 minus 4 is negative 12. Now that we've simplified the problem, we can go ahead and get the x's all to one side. I'm going to go ahead and subtract these two x over. In doing that, I'm left with 8 equals 10x minus 2x is 8x minus 12. The last step, well not quite the last step, but then we could go ahead and add 12 to both sides. Adding 12 to both sides gets us 20 equals 8x. And lastly, we can undo the multiplication here. How do we undo multiplication? You bet, using division. So we divide both sides by 8. We're left with 20 over 8 equals x. Now don't forget, you shouldn't leave your answer like this because it can simplify. We can take out 4's. And so we would say that the answer is um, 5 over 2. Or, if you really want to, you could say 2 and a half. Um, if you go ahead and convert that to a mixed number. So there's some uh, different situations that could happen with equations. Let's go ahead and write some up for you guys to try in your video notebook. Okay, here are your four problems that we'd like you to try in the video notebook. Go ahead and pause the video now when you're ready to check your answers. Press the play button to resume. Okay, hopefully you had a chance to uh, try these. If not, really do make sure you're trying these so that you get some extra practice here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and work on solving these. The first thing on number one to do is we gotta get these x's to the same side. So the best way to probably do that, uh, you might have subtracted 7x, that's fine if you did, but I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 3x to both sides. When I do that, the x's over here are gone, I'm just left with 2 equals 7x minus 3x are 4 x's minus 6. We then add 6 to both sides because the opposite of minus 6 is plus 6, so we get 8 equals 4x. Lastly, we would divide by 4, and we get x equals 2. Okay, great. On number 2, we're going to go ahead and distribute. Uh, so we'll go ahead and distribute this 4 into the parentheses. We get 4x plus 20 minus x equals 11. Let's go ahead and combine these like terms. 4x minus x is 3x plus 20 equals 11. My next move would be to subtract 20 to both sides, which leaves me with 3x equals 11 minus 20, that's negative 9. We then would divide by 3, so we get x equals negative 3 as our answer after dividing by 3 to both sides. How'd you do on that one? Remember that you can go back and uh, replay the video if you need to re-see these uh, worked out. On this number 3 here, we're going to go ahead and distribute into both of these parentheses. We get 5x plus 5 equals 2x minus 6. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2x to both sides. When I do that, I've got all the x's then together. 5x minus 2x is 3x plus 5 equals 2x minus 2x. That's gone. Minus 6. Running out of room here, but uh, we would minus 5 to both sides. That would leave me, I'm going to go ahead and go up here, I apologize. 3x equals negative 11, because we minus 5 to both sides. And then divide by 3. The answer is negative 11 thirds, 
And if you converted to a mixed number, that's fine as well. You would have got negative 3 and 2 thirds if you converted to the mixed number. Great. The last one here, number 4, uh, to do this, uh, we're going to go ahead and distribute the negative 2. Now, who don't forget, this is one of that one of those big errors that always happens in math. You've got to distribute the negative into both of these. So we would have got 5 minus 2x minus 8. Check your paper right now to make sure that you put minus and minus. It's the negative gets distributed as well, okay? Uh, so then we can combine like terms. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. So we're left with negative 2x minus 3 equals 10. We then would add 3 to both sides, and I would get negative 2x equals 13. And lastly, we would divide by negative 2 to get our answer, which is negative 13 over 2. Um, and if you went to a mixed number, that's fine as well. It would be 6 and a half, negative 6 and a half. Okay, well, good work with these. Once you've learned how to do this uh, jumping in, clearing out the parentheses, getting all the x's to one side or the other, there are a couple of things that are going to be strange cases. These strange cases, they should cause you to ponder. For example, let's do this problem. 2x plus 10 equals 2 parentheses x plus 5. We know how to do that. We're like, oh yeah, clear out the parentheses first, and we have 2x plus 10 equals 2x plus 10. You may at that moment say, hey, something's fishy. Or let's assume you didn't. You're like, let's get the x's to both sides, and you go t minus 2x minus 2x. You're like, uh, uh-oh. We are now at 10 equals 10. You're like, oh, well, the answer must be 10. Well, it's not technically the only answer that works. What I'm going to tell you is that this right here is true. This problem is true when that one is true. And that is true when 10 equals 10. Now I want you to look at this over here. We're going to do one a little bit differently. 2x plus 10 equals 7. And if we subtract 10 from both sides, subtract 10, we get 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, and we get x equals a negative 3 halves. What this means is that this equation right here is true when that one is true. So when x equals negative 3 halves, we get a true statement up here. However, this one, you'll notice the x isn't there. 10 equals 10 always, no matter if x is 7, x could equal uh, x could equal negative 3, x could equal 15, x could equal 39, and we still get a true statement. This is simply always true. There's no condition like x equals negative 3 halves to make this true. So when you get a, a statement that is always true, we just say, hey, x could equal all numbers. And that is your answer. And you can try these. Stick in 7 up here and see if 2 times 7 plus 10, that's 24, equals 2 times 7 plus 5, 24. Yeah, 24 equals 24. 7 is the solution. Try it with negative 3. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 10. That's a positive 4. Negative 3 plus 2 is um, 2 times 2 is 4. So no matter what problem we stick in, this will be an equal statement. And that's, that's one of these strange cases. When the x goes away and it gives an always true statement, your answer will be all numbers. All numbers will work in there. Let's try the next one. So now we'll change that problem just a little bit. 2x plus 10 equals 2x plus 4. And let's see what happens here. We jump this in. We're just solving this equation just like normal. 2x plus 10 equals 2x plus 8. And right there, you're thinking something is amiss. And you might be able to identify it then. But here, we'll try to get the x's together, and something bad happens. And we get 10 equals 8. 10 equals 8? Ah! What in the world are we thinking? 10 equals 8. Who would ever write that down? I think that's something a kindergartner could come in and say, what are you doing? You're totally wrong. This is a false statement. Always false, no matter what. And so if you think about it, this is true when 
that is true, and that is true when that is true, that this statement will never, ever be true. It is never true. No matter what x equals, x you could try to equal 7, or x could equal negative 3, and these will never work. No matter what you put in for x, so in this case the answer is no solution. Uh, some people write this symbol, it means the set that doesn't have anything in it, the empty set, but you're welcome to just write no solution if you feel more comfortable with that. And that's what happens when the x's go away and you end up with this completely absurd statement at the end. And that should help you finish the rest of your assignment. Good luck.